So what, and beam validation uh, is based on the Java request 303, which basically lets, uh, lets uh, class declare on its fields or methods validation annotations. And these can then be validated by different mechanisms. You can validate the data uh, based on the same validation specifications when saving it to the database, when the user is entering it in the us user interface, and so on. <coughs> so a few examples of what kind of annotations <coughs> you have. You can annotate your data class, for instance, with uh, a field with not null. And whenever the validator is run, uh, the, this is checked. <coughs> you can annotate with size, uh, which can apply to uh, strings, to collections, and so on. You can make uh, regular expression validation. You can create your own custom validators. <coughs> uh, in the background, uh, JSR 303 uh, defines these annotations. It defines uh, some APIs on how to, how to trigger the validation, <coughs> but it doesn't provide an implementation of the validation. So, so there are different validation implementations available. There's one from Hibernate. So if you are using Hibernate in the project, it's, it's simple to add the Hibernate validation module. Otherwise, the reference implementation is one from Agimatech. No, uh, sorry. The Hibernate one is the reference implementation, I believe, but there's one from Agimatech as well, which might be a little bit simpler in terms of the dependencies. Uh, so again, if you are using Maven, for instance, it's very easy to add the dependencies. You need uh, two free dependency entries. If you have to hunt down the JAWS yourself, that's the hardest part in taking beam validation to use. Little example of a data class being to validate. So declaring that we have a we have a string, we have a name string which has certain minimum maximum size, and we let the validation failure message be the default one. We tell that the last name may not be null. Well, we could also use the not empty validator, which uh, which would check also for empty string and so on. And for each of these annotations, we can also specify our own validation message. Uh, the messages can also come from resource bundles. So the default messages actually are typically internationalized. <coughs> <coughs> then to use the Vardin add-on, which you can find in the directory. Uh, the easiest way if you are using the standard Vardin form, it's just to use beam validation form instead. Parameterize it with the class to validate, and it will uh, find the annotations from the data class and automatically attach validators for each, each of these fields, as well as mark fields as required uh, based on the not null annotation. <coughs> then, uh, if you use it with, with a bean item, you get full validation automatically. If you use it with some other item, um, <coughs> it, it is not able to check the runtime type of the bean to validate, but it will still add validators based on the class that you gave as a parameter to the constructor. Uh, if you are not using the form, you can also uh, add a validator yourself, either by creating a beam validation validator and uh, attaching it to a field, or with the help of a method add validator, static method that, um, <coughs> in addition to attaching the validator, uh, sets the required uh, flag as necessary. So that's about it for the invalidation. <coughs>